The logarithm is one of the most important functions in mathematics. Logarithms are used to turn difficult multiplication problems into simple addition. Say you're a friendly hot dog vendor, and hot dogs come in packs of eight, and you have 16 packs of them, and you need to know how many buns you need, and your trusty calculator is far, far away. Well, using the principle of logarithms, you could transform 8 into 2 to the 3rd power, and 16 to 2 to the 4th power, add the exponents, and come up with 2 to the 7th. And with a nifty logarithmic table, you will find that you need 128 buns for your dogs. Because if you don't have enough hot dogs for your hungry patrons, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Historically, the discovery of logarithms began with John Napier, Baron of Merchanston in Scotland. He had a lifelong interest in efficient methods for calculation and invented Napier's rods or Napier's bones, a set of marked sticks that could be used to perform multiplication quickly and reliably by simulating pen and paper methods. Around 1594 he started working on a more theoretical method and his writings tell us that it took him 20 years to perfect and publish. Here it had long been noticed that adding the exponents was equivalent to multiplying the powers. This was fine if you wanted to multiply two integer powers of 2, say, or two integer powers of 10, but there were big gaps between these numbers and powers of 2 or 10 seemed not to help much when it came to problems like 57.681 times 29.443. At the turn of the 16th century, the Catholic Church had power equal to that of the Roman Empire. In Scotland, Catholic rule was being enforced by Queen Mary, but uprisings by the Protestants were tearing the country apart. John Napier, like his father before him, was a devout Protestant who was very much involved in the religious controversies of the era the same way many of today's great minds take an interest in politics. As we now know, Napier considered mathematics a hobby, and theology his lifelong career. In 1593, Napier published A Plain Discovery of the Whole Revelation of St. John, a work in which he claimed his calculations based on the Book of Revelations pointed to Pope Clement VIII being the Antichrist and that the end of the world would either come in 1688 or 1700. Not only did Napier consider this throughout his entire life to be his greatest achievement, but it was also considered important by the Scots as it was the first Scottish text to interpret the scriptures. The book also achieved some degree of popularity in France, Germany, and the Netherlands. However, not everyone saw Napier as an enlightened man. Many believed he was a reclusive thinker to be in league with the horned one himself, to be servant of the devil. After all, the grass on his estate was greener due to his agricultural skills, and he was highly intelligent, not to mention his late night walks in his nightgown and cap and his reported usage of a black rooster to root out a thieving servant. <laughs> One can only imagine his critics exclaim, for this must surely be work of a warlock. But far from it. To catch one of his servants who had been pilfering tools from the supply shed, Napier, the marvelous merchantson, simply put lamp soot on his black rooster and put it in the dark shed and lined up his servants telling them his black rooster had the mysterious power of divination and could single out the culprit. Each man was sent in and asked to simply touch the bird knowing full well that the thief would sneak by without touching the cockerel when all the servants emerged with black hands except for one, Napier nabbed the thief. It was much easier for average folk to consider Napier's ingenuity to be wizardry than plain old ingenuity for it required no further reasoning on their part. While the good baron was trying to somehow fill the gaps in geometric progressions, the physician to King James VI of Scotland told Napier about a discovery that was in widespread use in Denmark with the ungainly name prostaphoresis. This referred to any process that converted products into sums. If you had tables of sines and cosines, you could use this formula to convert a product into a sum. It was messy, but it was still quicker than multiplying the numbers directly. Napier seized on the idea and found a major improvement. He formed a geometric series with a common ratio very close to 1. That is, in place of powers of 2 or powers of 10, you should use powers of, say, 1 and 1 ten millionth. Successive powers of such a number are very closely spaced, which gets rid of those annoying gaps. For some reason, Napier chose a ratio slightly less than 1, namely, a decimal followed by 7 nines. So his geometric sequence ran backwards from a large number to successively smaller ones. In fact, he started with 10 million and then multiplied by successive powers of a decimal followed by 7 nines. If we write nap log x for Napier's logarithm of x, it has the curious feature that nap log of 10 million equals 0, nap log of 9,999,999 equals 1, and so on. The Napierian logarithm, nap log x, satisfies the equation 
nap log of 10 to the 7th xy equals nap log x plus nap log y. You can use this for calculations because it is easy to multiply or divide by a power of 10, but it lacks elegance. Once mathematicians had calculated tables of logarithms, they could be used by anyone who understood the method. From the 17th century until the mid-20th, virtually all scientific calculations, especially astronomical ones, employed logarithms. The development of logarithms is given credit as the single largest fact in the general adoption of decimal arithmetic. Anything for science. Ah, I think I broke my buns. I'm going to relish that one for a long time. Oh. Help me, I got I got to catch up. <laughs>